fellow Toastmasters, and my dear guests. Let us start with a very small exercise. And for this, I would need all of you to switch on your cameras. Okay, I see some cameras getting switched on now. That's great. So I request all of you to close your eyes and think of the worst problem you were stuck in. Come on, do try it. Feel the emotions and the discomfort you experienced when you were in that problem. Oh my, I see so many faces writhing in pain. Must have been tough. Now, keep your eyes closed and think about that one person who helped you see the light at the end of the tunnel, who not only helped you come out of that arduous situation, but also continued to be your go-to person for any issues thereafter. Okay, yes, now I see some beautiful, beaming, smiling faces. And that's essentially the effect mentors have on their mentees. They just light up their world, don't they? My first experience was exactly the polar opposite of this. I was a happy kid, buzzing around uh, like a very happy bee around flowers and lush green fields in the spring. Until the day I met my mentor. Two months before my school's annual day event, in which students perform plays and prizes are distributed, one student from each class was asked to give a short speech in the most prestigious speech competition. My class teacher, Miss Thelma Gomes, or Miss Tay Gomes, as all students fondly called her, was handed the responsibility of picking a student from class two. Students who were academically sound and were in the teacher's good books were usually picked. So when her arm swung like a cannonball and she roared, Rishabh, you will represent class two and give a short speech. Yet the class was baffled. There was pin drop silence. But why were the students baffled? Because I, Rishabh, was by consensus the biggest nuisance in the school. I would find incalculable ways to trouble not just my class teacher, but every possible teacher who I crossed paths with. I'd hide chalks and dusters just before the class, ask the silliest questions to delay lessons, and somehow convince other students to not do their homework at all. Anything, anything to throw a wrench in the teacher's plans. In fact, to quote one of the victim teachers, if there was ever a school that honored values such as disobedience, chaos, and anarchy, Rishabh would graduate as a valedictorian there. So as it came to me naturally, I rebelled. I shouted and cried and begged to hang over this responsibility to someone else. My parents were so worried that when they, mess, when they met Miss T. Gomes to inquire about this, Miss T. pacified their worries by saying that she knew exactly what she was doing. And my journey through the mud trenches began. Much like a young army cadet's first drill attempt, I struggled and how while practicing. I would often forget words or mispronounce them. I could hear other teachers snickering behind my back as I practiced and I would immediately tear up. But Miss T, she never gave up. She gave me video cassettes and CDs of famous public speakers and trained me after school to help improve my voice modulation. She urged me to take up small public speaking engagements in my run up to the event, show and tell, reading a poem in front of my class, telling a story and much more. I would often just throw tantrums when I failed and blame Misty, but she remained persistent. And her sheer determination was what helped me through this journey. On the D-Day, I reached out to hold the mic on the virtual lecture. I saw the faces of all the teachers, a villainous smile on their faces, as if they were just waiting for me to fail and karmic justice to strike me for all the perils I had caused them earlier. And amongst them, Misty, her stern and confident expression 
telling me to unleash my potential. With tears rolling down my cheek, I took a deep breath and just struggled to utter the first word. Years later, when I went back to school to visit Miss T. Gomes, I couldn't help but notice a giant plaque with names of all the winners of the prestigious speech competition. She fondly asked me how I was doing as she dusted off the top of the plaque to reveal the name of the only class two student in the last 18 years who had managed the coveted competition. A student who understood that with discipline and practice, anything can be achieved. A student who loved proving the naysayers wrong. A student who was Miss T's biggest challenge and now knows was lucky enough to be so. That is how I envision Toastmasters mentally. Thank you. Back to the home. Wonderful speech,